One video countless people asked for was a simplex uh, primer on energy generation. I made the video um, that I uploaded uh, yesterday, and of course it would have compiled into questions about uh, kinetic energy, and I'll make that video um, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, because it was obviously about uh, wind and uh, nuclear uh, energy or uh, hydroelectric energy. There's no direct energy transfer, and then of course the question comes, well, it's, it becomes from kinetic energy. And, well, that's that's uh, all well and fine until you uh, think that uh, weight um, and uh, elevation uh, from the point of acceleration is itself potential energy. And uh, it's uh, kind of a nonsensical. So let's actually uh, talk about one of these. Uh, I'll start off with one of the things that Eric Dollard has said, and he's 100% correct, and go on to uh, discussing um, energy and actually talk about that. But first, let's start off by saying um, regarding magnetism, the wake of a magnetic field is uh, the creation of a temporal bubble. Time doesn't exist. It exists conventionally, but it doesn't exist ultimately. But to say uh, the creation of space and to say time and to say a magnetic uh, toroidal bubble, if you will, and of course it's toroidal, it's not specifically a bubble, but it's essentially a bubble, is one and the same thing. To say the creation of space and the creation of time in a divergent magnetic field are really talking about uh, one and the same thing, really a distinction without a difference, a nuance. It's really conceptual reification to think of these things as different. But uh, first, I'm going to do a, a take on Eric Dollard's uh, quote, and that uh, all so-called conductors are uh, really dielectric reflectors and energy uh, guides. And they are. That's exactly what they are. They see power lines outside your house or in front of your house, as the case may be. Let's uh, do a very quick uh, synopsis and keep it very, very simple about energy generation. I've actually had a couple of people that are electrical engineers for many, many decades. And uh, one guy said, uh, when asked, he's like, well, where's the energy coming from? And uh, his answer, and uh, he said it ticked people off when he gave the answer. He says, we don't know. He says, it's magic. <laughs> it's like your electrical engineer of like 40 some decades, uh, 40 decades, I mean, 40 years. Um, all manifest, i.e., um, um, uh, of the material world here, all manifest energy, and there's unmanifest energy from counter space. There's only two dimensions, spatial and counter spatial, obviously, but meaning manifest energy, meaning palpable energy that uh, is uh, within the physical universe, i.e., an ether perturbation modality. All manifest energy is ether torsion in guided form. All fields are in simplex, ether perturbation modalities, just like ice, water, and steam, are just different temperature and pressure modalities of one thing, obviously. So, um, this this stuff is not from Dollar, by the way. This is uh, my uh, synopsis on uh, on uh, energy and uh, waveguides. I'll actually get into the nitty gritty very shortly here, but keep it simple. Energy is only created uh, in a generator when ether torsion is manifest by changing the field arch form between the conjugate structures of one, the magnetic field relative to time, and number two, the dielectric reflector or the energy guidelines. Um, it's called a generator, of course, not a transformer, not an exchanger, but a generator uh, really should be called, depends on what you want to call it here, who cares what we call it, a counter space or an ether torsion portal. Let's try that again. A counter space, or I prefer uh, ether torsion portal, is an arch form, of course. All uh, transmitter lines are really torsion guide forms uh, for uh, energy manifest in any generator. Uh, magnetic field itself, the wake is temporal, is uh, time. Time does exist conventionally. Time is, of course, the measure of magnitudes. Uh, centrifugal divergent uh, force vector, i.e. magnetism, which is toroidal, creates temporal disparity. This is also Lamour frequency geomagnetic precession, creates uh, temporal disparity. It's the same reason why we actually get radically different results from North Pole exposed seeds versus South Pole exposed seeds. I don't want to go into discussion on uh, seeds uh, there, obviously. Um, so the magnetic field, its wake is time. By moving a magnetic field, which is already a temporal bubble, relative to a stationary so-called conductor, 
Um, ether torsion is generated, i.e. energy. Uh, a temporal wake torsion is time itself, i.e. conventionally a magnetic field. When this torsion is moved, that is the compounding of temporal torsion. Yeah, compounding of temporal torsion. We could say it's compounded time, but that's a little esoteric. Uh, and this generates, of course, ether torsion when presented with respect to the dielectric reflectors or the actual guidelines for power generation. All uh, temporal anomalies uh, create uh, lag change torsion. That's a really important point. Um, by the way, I wrote this stuff. Like I said, only the first passage there was uh, from Dollard. All temporal anomalies create a lag change torsion. This, of course, is field hysteresis, a great word that we never learned in high school or college, really, unless you became an electrical engineer. Hysteresis. Um, the lag creates uh, catch-up rebounding or snapback, which is ether torsion. Very, very important. The lag generated by compounding time with the changing the magnetic field respect to the dielectric reflector creates a lag torsion. The catch-up rebounding or the snapback, kind of like pulling a rubber band back, you know, creates a, an ether torsion. And uh, given the guide must be present, obviously, so we have uh, the creation of energy. Magnetism, of course, creates both space and time, but to say space and time and to say magnetism is one of the same thing. And this bubble is the ether rarefaction. The wake of a divergent force vector, i.e. magnetism, is ether rarefaction. Okay? This uh, rarefaction toroidal bubble, a bubble's not really a toroid, but we could think of a toroid, large donut as a bubble. This uh, rarefaction bubble creates that torsion. This is uh, the complexity of uh, understanding power generation, and it was expressed in understanding it and how mystifying it was. Dr. Oleg Dijefomenko, two PhDs, he actually uh, explained this in uh, his one book, Electrodynamics. What's the rest of the title? I can't think of it. When he was uh, referencing uh, um, James Clerk Maxwell, um, even physicists today are uh, perplexed about the generation of the magnetic field with respect uh, to the dielectric. People are confused about what the heck dielectricity is relative to electricity. People are confused in general. Electrical engineers, I mean real ones that leave comments like, I'm complex, you know, I only need to know what I need to know, they tell me. You know, I don't know what this means. I mean, that's the reason why it's called uh, field theory. But I mean, there's only uh, one conjugate pair in the entire universe, dielectric and magnetic, respectively, the, the geometries of the hyperboloid and the geometry of the toroid. You know, a centrifugal force vector, a divergent uh, force and motion vector, i.e. magnetism, leaves in its wake ether rarefaction, and it creates uh, space and time. Time exists conventionally. Time is not a thing itself, but it does exist, because it's the same as a shadow. You know, you stand in a shadow, you're going to feel cold, right? But a shadow is not a thing. A shadow is an absence of light. Uh, space and time are the shadows of uh, the ether due to a centrifugal uh, force divergence, i.e. magnetism. And this sets up a temporal bubble. When this is present, that is present. By the way, that's an ancient passage. When a divergent uh, magnetic uh, force vector is present, there is lag. When that lag, which is time itself, is also changed with respect to time relative to the dielectric reflector, i.e. the energy guide form, and just think about that for a second, yeah? The time that is the after effect of a divergent, in other words, the toroidal bubble of a magnetic field, is time. Within that is time, which is only conventional, but is real conventionally. When that is changed with respect to time, in other words, time compounded in time, then ether torsion is manifest. Because there is a catch-up. Because when you have time, you have lag. And when you have lag, it's uh, it would kind of like be, I'm trying to think of a really simplex analogy, like pulling a rubber band really quickly, you know, to the point that it breaks, but you pull it so quickly, but before it can break and catch up and snap back and, you know, you know injure the back of your hand slightly, there is a lag. That torsion lag, of course, that's the energy generated, you know, is the byproduct of changing the field with respect to time, but the time of the magnetic field is itself a temporal bubble, but that temporal bubble change with respect to time relative to the guide form of the dielectric reflector, or the so-called conductors, is the generation, manifestation, 
of energy, of electricity. Um, so it should be called an ether torsion portal. So you're in a and a generator. It's kind of like sounds like a science fiction reference, but I mean that's really what it is. Is an ether torsion portal. It is an arch form wherein which and I and I've said this in countless videos by the way that uh, the way the arch form of an AC generator works is that it's an inside out magnet. The ma the center of a magnet of course is the plane of inertia, and the magnetic field exists as everyone knows around the outside of the magnet. Yeah. Well, a generator is literally a magnet inside out. The magnetic field is in the center, and of course you actually have the dielectric reflectors or the so-called conductors on the outside, which is the plane of inertia at which the ether torsion is generated where the time of the temporal bubble is changed relative to time itself outside of that torsional bubble. And of course, the more uh, motion you have, the more torsion you generate. The more torsion you generate, the more energy you generate, yeah? Anybody knows you have a hand crank uh, generator, you know, the, the more you turn it, the more power you generate, the more voltage you create. But that really is simplifying uh, energy generation in its most simplex form. I don't think I said anything uh, in this past 10 minutes plus that is uh, really confusing, at least I hope not. I tried to simplify it because I love making videos that are unlike anything else that are out there. And... Uh, and I uh, created this little uh, tiny list that I thought would uh, simplify things because, uh, you know, tomorrow or day after tomorrow, let's uh, talk about uh, kinetic energy. And is kinetic energy really energy? Um, because motion itself, I mean, I wanted to make a, a point. Motion is not a thing, but what, it's like a wave. You know, there's no such thing as waves. Waves are what things do, not what things are. Motion is not a thing either. Motion uh, is what something does. So there's no such thing as motion equaling. Sure there is, kinetic energy. Well, current uh, scientific theory states that uh, the greater uh, distance there is uh, from uh, the acceleration, like this is the ground, for example, you know, the greater distance there is, the more potential energy. In other words, like when you stick something on a higher shelf, it has more kinetic energy because you could harness the kinetic energy of the acceleration of the falling object to the earth, yeah? And you would get more energy. So the higher up on the shelf it is, the more kinetic energy. But that's illogical. That doesn't uh, follow common sense. So the video from yesterday was meant to... Uh, get people to ask about uh, kinetic energy. And is kinetic energy actually energy? When we talk about something kinetic, we're talking about the motion of something. But motion is not energy. A shadow is not a thing either. And there's no such thing as waves. Waves are what things do. It's like oh, the flickering of the flames, or I see flickering. Yeah, but what's flickering? You know, flickering is not a thing. It's the flames that are flickering. Of course, this is not a real fireplace either, but let's not take the analogy too far. So... I'd like to talk about the kinetic energy and whether it's actually energy since we're talking about motion. And uh, that doesn't fly if you actually apply retroductive logic to it, but that opens up other things also. Something else that I was certain of for a very, very long time, and as a truth seeker, you're always trying to uh, correct yourself, and I am one of those types, that I thought free energy was completely impossible. And... Uh, Having delved into all the uh, deep minutia of energy and energy manifestation, I am certain that free energy actually is possible. I was certain forever that it was not. But considering energy manifestation, there's no direct transference, be it the kinetic energy or otherwise. Uh, spontaneous energy generation is a, uh, is a waveguide in an arch form. Free energy is absolutely possible, which I was certain forever and ever was uh, not possible, but that's also too a matter for another discussion. I thought about it endlessly. Do I have the answer to that? What that specific arch form is? No, but I got an idea. I've also got a nice little lab in the basement where I build stuff. Not a mad scientist, but anyway. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a good day. Goodbye.